Um, so we went down and I parked up around about Chicago Pie Pizza Factory and we'll, we went up to the, um, I can't remember what it was called back then. Um, it wasn't Auntie Annie's because that's, uh, it, it was somewhere along that Dublin Road part anyway, where upstairs they had a, like a heavy metal night. <laughs> um, and it, 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 you know, it, 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 to be honest with you, it was, it was fucking crap because um, you were at the mercy of uh, a DJ who, you know, was trying to just be current, you know, and he wasn't interested whatsoever in um, in playing anything classic. Um, so we listened to, you know, I went up to him and said to him, L "Listen, can you can you play some Maiden or can you, you know?" And he was going, "What, you know, what, what, why so old school?" And I said, "You know, because I am, <laughs> you know, but uh, if you don't." You know, sort of play some stuff because he was blasting out all this, you know, sort of new rock type stuff and then very, very heavy metal, um, which was great, you know, very well played. But you're sitting there having a beer and you want to, you know, you want to get your head, you know, going. And um, I said to him, like, if you don't, uh, then I'm, I'm gone, you know. And, uh, and he went sort of, bye. And I went, I was okay, that's fine. So I went over to bed. And uh, and said to her, "Let's go. This is fucking shit. You know, it's um, you know, some wannabe fucking DJ up there. You know, trying to revolution it. In all honesty, three weeks later, the place was shut down. <laughs> you know, so <laughs> who was right and who was wrong? Um, so another couple of pints anyway, and then but then we were hungry." And I knew that if I went this wee way, once I picked up the car, we could go round by the back of, um, round the, the, it's just these wee back ways through Sand, uh, Sandy Road by Shaftesbury Square and end up at the kebab shop. And I got, you know, a kebab. She got a kebab and chili sauce on one, you know, house sauce on another sort of thing but uh i was parked in in the opposite direction so i had to go back and there was there's like this little street round by um around the back of the kebab shop and bear had said to me um you know that fucking heavy metal disco that we went to was crap and i went you know it really was and i stuck in um a cd that we really liked uh, it was like House of Lords or something, or, or it was it was something that was really melodic but really really exciting, and it had it, it built up the crescendo, the crescendo, the crescendo, um, and just I, I, it's it's like this uh, not um, not Bill and Ted um, Wayne's World the the Wayne's World bit you know where the sort of Bohemian Rhapsody thing happens in the car. And they go, dun, 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 dun. So I'm dun, dun, dun. but I, I must have swerved a little, and then I look back, and there was a police car behind me. You know, whoop, whoop, whoop. Lights pull in. This is right outside the. If you're familiar with it, with um, just right outside the Northern Ireland Supporters Club in Salisbury Square. So I pulled in, and the cop, the cops pulled in behind me. So the cops came around and um, and said, I noticed you swerving a little there. And I said, really sorry about that. I, I wasn't drunk in any way. You know, I had a couple of beers, but I wasn't drunk in any way. Um, and I said, I'm sorry. I think I might have been reaching over to put on my seatbelt. And the guy said, well, you should have had your seatbelt on right away, sort of thing. Um, and I'm going, oh my God got a fucking stickler here so um he's he wasn't gonna let me go i knew right away that i was his target for the night and this nice girl um cop um and he said could you step out of the vehicle please so I stepped out of the vehicle but i was still in the <laughs> in the vehicle and i stepped out and he said i'm gonna do this uh, you know a breathalyzing thing 
And I went, by all means do. I said, look, listen, I'm going to tell you right now, I've had a couple of beers, but it was like, you know, uh, qu- quite a while back. It m- might flicker, but, you know, it's not going to, you know, show that I'm drunk or anything, or I wouldn't even have, you know, contemplated, you know, driving, especially on a Friday night in the city centre. So I did the breathalyzing test, um, and it did flicker, and he went, I'm sorry, but uh, you're going to have to come back with us round to uh, Musgrave, Musgrave Police Station, you know. To, um, and I thought, well, okay. I, I, all of a sudden, he grabbed me and he put me against the you know the bonnet of the car and put my arms around behind my back and handcuffed me. <laughs> and I'm going, what am I? I mean. <laughs> Seriously, you know, I, I mean, it, it wasn't that I was in shock. I was like a kind of a, all right, you know, let's see, let's see where this goes. I says, now listen, okay, you know, you've got me handcuffed, you've got me banged or right, so whatever, you know, this thing did with this uh, breathalyzing thing. But what's going to happen to my car? You know, it can't sit there. Or you know, if you bring me around to the police station, you know, and my she was then um, girlfriend but yeah, you know she can't just sit there <laughs> all night in, uh, in Shaftesbury Square in, in an abandoned car and the, the police lady she said um, I'll drive the car back behind you you know to um, the the, um, the the barracks oh. so I'm back and uh, big gates open in the Musgrave Park, pulled up, got the girl pulled up with uh, with my car behind her, and the cop who had me handcuffed sort of thing said, um, "Have you got anything to declare?" You know, and I went, <laughs> um, "What do you mean?" And he says, "Have you got any illegal substances on you?" You know, and I went, "Absolutely not." You know, I, I don't I don't partake of anything like that. I says, but there might be something in my pocket that might be sort of um, controversial if you were to put your hand in and take it out, sort of thing. And he was going, what is it? What is it? You know, is it a knife? Is it, you know, whatever? And I went, listen, I'm handcuffed. I can't put my hand in to show you. So you're going to have to put your hand in and find out for yourself. And (laughs) the guy was all like, he got he got two other guys over to stand behind him, you know. So, it, um, what I don't know what he was expecting, you know, for the find, you know, like either bags of crack or explosives or whatever. But I knew what I had in my pocket, you know. But I knew that uh, I couldn't actually, you know. He wanted my pockets emptied. There was something in my pocket. I couldn't take it out of my pocket. It was up to somebody else to do so. And I wasn't going to tell him exactly what it was because it wasn't, you know, <laughs> it wasn't my place to, uh, to sort of give everything away. Um, <laughs> so two cops behind one cop and these two cops had their weapons drawn. Um, and then this cop came over to me and he put, and I had like, um, like a black leather blazer on pockets. Um, it was like, like a, a UDF jacket, you know, a UDA jacket, IRA jacket, you know, but whatever. It was one of those like nineteen seventies leather jackets sort of thing. And the cop put his hand in my pocket, put a glove and all on, like you know, b- before he did it, <laughs> and pulled out this thing which just dangled in his hand, and he said, "What's this?" And I said, "That's." That's my wife uh, or my girlfriend's knickers. <laughs> it's her thong, you know, like her, her tanga <laughs> sort of thing. And I was going, what are you carrying that about with you for? Um, and I says, just for luck. You know, it, it's always been in my pocket, you know, from the moment I met her, you know, over in Spain and stuff. Um, I rolled it up and, uh, and I stole it on her. And then whenever I got back to uh, the Northern Ireland, I said, by the way, I've got part of you over here with me. And uh, she was all, what, 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 what? And I said, you know, and I sent her a photograph of her, of her pants, you know, sort of thing. <laughs> but I just, I always just kept them tucked in them a pocket, you know, and brought them, brought them everywhere.